Good evening to all of you, and thank you for being here, especially if you're brand new to Anselm House, or if you extended a hand to somebody brand new. All of your presence tonight is such a gift to us, so thank you. I also want to thank Dan and Marin and Becca and Jeff and the entire Anselm House team for all the work that they've done to make this evening possible. Tonight, I'd like to talk a bit about grace and the modern university, the University of Minnesota in particular, and pose the question, how might God's grace be present to the modern university? And I want to make a case for a community like Anselm House being a special kind of grace for a university like ours. Of course, the first thing to say is that universities are a product of centuries of grace. The university is one of the great achievements of God's grace working in human civilization over the last millennium. Even our humble U of M is approaching 175 years. Universities are places where hundreds or even thousands of people come come together forming a community committed to the patient study of the world in all of its astonishing variety and the human place in it. It's simply amazing that that when we as human beings, uh, whether we're Christians or not, apply our, um, our minds to the world around us, it yields fruitful knowledge. Together, we can learn good and useful things about growing resilient crops, or the English Civil War, or about how to lead a company that truly serves the common good. Here at Minnesota, we can think of Earl Bakken's invention of the portable pacemaker, or Norman Borlaug's life-saving wheat varietals for which he won the Nobel Peace Prize. And the list could go on and on. Universities at their best contribute in countless ways to human flourishing. Their accomplishments are astounding, even as their missions are noble. And I want you to listen to the echoes of grace in our university's mission statement. The University of Minnesota, founded in the belief that all people are enriched by understanding, is dedicated to the advancement of learning and the search for truth, to sharing, to the sharing of this knowledge through education for a diverse community, and to the application of this knowledge to benefit the people of the state, the nation, and the world. That's a mission that Minnesotans who are followers of Jesus can get behind and support. Amen? But I won't be the first to tell you that all is not well with the university. And not just from a Christian perspective. The loss of committed religious knowing within academia has coincided and perhaps even helped contribute to a larger loss of meaning and purpose in the university as a whole. And Dan alluded to this earlier. In the words of some prominent academic insiders, the university has given up on the meaning of life, gone academically adrift, and even lost its soul. Without seeing how all things hold together in Christ, The pursuit of truth is at best partial and at worst misguided. So what does the university need in these times? Well, a lot more grace. And in many, many different forms. And here at Anselm House, we believe the university needs grace in the form of a Christian community deeply and actively engaged in its work. But can this happen here? Is it even possible? 
Well, for most of our lifetimes, there have been just two basic models for how Christians have brought together Christian faith with higher education. And Christian parents of college age kids will know these alternatives very well. One, the first of these is the campus ministry, led by the campus minister. Uh, and this, by the way, is an AI-generated composite <laughs> of every campus minister on the internet. Campus ministries are a wonderful grace. They are highly decentralized. They rarely require credentialing for their employees. They're agile and perhaps even a little scrappy in the good way. They equip for a fairly narrow purpose and certainly an important one. They have the feel of a church community for college students. They largely work with undergraduates, and they exist across the country almost anywhere there are college students. Now, the one place that campus ministries rarely serve, for obvious reasons, is at Christian colleges, which is our second model. Christian colleges are also an amazing grace. In some ways, they're institutionally the opposite of campus ministries. They're resource-intensive, all-purpose institutions, requiring a lot of credentialing and delivering a lot of wonderful Christian formation. And of course, they need to charge a lot of money for their services. They're institutionally strong, but relatively inflexible. But perhaps the biggest difference with campus ministries is they educate broadly. And importantly, they do bring faith into the work of this broad education. For all their differences, though, these two models share one striking thing in common. They are both largely peripheral to the life and work of a modern public research university. You might say they leave the mainstream university alone. Christian colleges are often worlds away from major universities, both figuratively and literally, while campus ministries serve the personal faith lives of students, but rarely engage with graduate students, faculty, or the academic missions of universities themselves. There are some very happy exceptions to this, but this is the, unfortunately the rule. Friends, this situation has had tragic consequences, even as it's contributed to a widening divide between faith and knowledge in our world, in our universities, and even in our lives and our churches. But what if there was another model of Christian engagement with mainstream university life, a third way? An institution established and resourced like a college, but existing not just for the welfare of the Christian community, but for the life and work of the public university. Well, by God's grace, working through countless people, there is. And let me share with you today how Anselm House, as a college of grace, carries out its work. And we do so in three distinct but overlapping ways. First, Anselm House is a place of extravagant hospitality. Melrose Station is an open study center with free Wi-Fi, beverages, and areas for study and community fellowship, and of course, ping pong pool and other activities. In addition to daily rhythms of public prayer and an afternoon tea time, a free meal is provided for the entire campus community each week during the, during the academic year. 
Nearly 100 unique guests are visiting Melrose Station every day, and more than 30 different campus ministries uh, partners host their campus Bible studies and meetings at Melrose Station. Were you to visit with any regularity, you'd quickly realize Melrose Station is not just another study space. It's the home of a community, a place where people know your name and look you in the eyes. At Melrose, we're creating a Christian collegiate culture of deep and lasting relationships ordered to God's kingdom. Second, our College of Grace takes up the task of Christian education and formation. The university teaches knowledge and in many respects does this very well. But it has not done as well, as Dan mentioned, in the formation of persons. And perhaps because the work of formation gets you quickly onto moral and religious ground. As you heard from Josiah, Anselm House's signature student program is the McLaren Fellows Program, a completely free one to four year co-curricular program of Christian formation open to all University of Minnesota students pursuing a degree. Gathering every other week over a home-cooked meal, our student fellows work with tutors to apply Christian truths to academic pursuits. Intentionally co-curricular in nature, we've now had nearly 300 people enroll over the last 10 years. Since the opening of River House last year, 12 of our fellows, like Josiah, are living together in intentional Christian community. And also, in addition to around 60 current fellows, this fall, more than 70 students and community members have enrolled in short courses on Christianity and medicine, justice in the Christian tradition, and a primer on how to read the Bible. And there are more formation programs in the works. Third and finally, integration. The goal of Anselm House's hospitality and formation programs, as it was for St. Anselm himself, is the the deep integrity of faith, life, and vocation that characterizes every mature disciple of Jesus Christ. And men and women of integrity in a university environment have a special calling to bear witness to another kind of integrity in God's good world. And that's the deep compatibility and mutual interdependence between Christian faith and rightly ordered human reason. And this is why a few years ago, Anselm House launched its Center for Faith and Learning, led by physicist Dr. A.J. Polarins, who joined our mission after 10 years as a physics professor at Wheaton College. We're praying that in the years to come, the center will contribute to a flourishing of Christian intellectual life on this campus, empowering faculty and graduate students and all Christian members of the university community for courageous witness and loving service, such that it will be said that the University of Minnesota is one of the best places to go to receive a Christian education. A College of Grace, Anselm House, working with and alongside campus ministries and Christian colleges has the potential to engage the work and life of the University of Minnesota in unprecedented and transformative ways. And we're institutionalized so that we're able to commit to the long game. We love the University of Minnesota so much that we moved in next door. The writer Andy Crouch 
put it this way. The most effective presence of Christians within secular institutions happens when Christians find a way to create lasting patterns of presence, which is to say, many institutions. And they make a multi-generational commitment to Christian presence. And then he said, probably the most encouraging movement in our time is that of Christian study centers with deep relational connections to the faculty and administration of the university. They are intended to exist for a long time, accompanying the university in its own quests of teaching, research, and service. Needless to say, we simply couldn't do this without an extended community of people who invest their time, talent, and treasure to help the university community experience the public graces of the living Christian tradition.